the period or the tone is gonna be like one of those movies that's like lecturing you the whole time and that's not what this movie is at all. Robert Pattinson getting there and and jeweling <laughs> in full costume. <laughs> yeah, that was a highlight. Yeah. I don't know, there were no funny moments for me. I experienced the whole thing as just suffering. <laughs> um, I, I think getting really good on a horse, uh, on a horseback, I just never would have thought <laughs> that would be a skill that I could have now and I really have that skill. I've ridden quite a lot since the movie, so I never thought I'd be good at that. <laughs> So Henry is in a couple of scenes and then bam, he's dead, right? When he's on his deathbed, it was the middle of summer and it was so hot. It was outrageously hot. Like this island and these parts of the world do not actually have the right to get to the temperatures that we were at this day. Well, you know, clown, hanging out, man, long hair, on your deathbed. Right, we're in this shit now. It's boiling, it's boiling. No, can we do something about this? Look, look, we've got the aircon on full blast, okay? We've got it on full blast, full blast. Okay, okay, let's keep going. Keep going, it's exhausting, tired, you're dying, so it's fortunate. We get there, we get there. We finish the day, oh man, that was good. We find out there's actually no air conditioning in this place. They had the heater turned up full blast. So we uh, suffered a, um, a horrendous near heat stroke day um, and they had the heaters on full blast thinking that there was the air con and that was kind of awesome because it's such a dumb, like of course, of course that's what happened. My friend Ed Ashley is in this film as well, plays Cambridge. We grew up together from in Manchester so it's bizarre that we were doing this film together anyway. And uh, he has the scene in the film where um, he has to get his head shaved before the scene. And he'd come out and he'd look like a baby bird. He'd fallen out <laughs> of his nest. And he had little tufts of hair. Um, and the way he came out of that, he was so, so dejected as he came out the trailer. He just felt so sad about his luscious curly locks that had gone. <laughs> oh, no. um, and I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't have to get one, so I guess it's easier for me to have a, a nicer opinion on it, but I thought everybody looked great. You, you were laughing. <laughs> uh, I was laughing a little bit. Honestly, though, you know, it grows back. Look how nice Tom's hair is now. It's so nice. To oh, <laughs> too kind, too kind. Yeah, it was traumatic, though, for a little while. It took I a bit of getting used to. guys looked great. I actually was told, so I have quite a large forehead, and when I went in for my, <laughs> my like, hair and makeup fitting for the, for the part, um, they were kind of starting to do my hair and stuff and they were like, oh, your forehead is perfect for the time period. And I went and kind of did some research on it and in this period, women used to pluck their fore pluck the hairs out of their forehead. Really? To have like, for the, yeah, it was like a sign of beauty and intelligence to have like big foreheads wow. in the period. So they used to pluck their hairlines and I was like, I don't know if I should take that Backhanded as a compliment, compliment. or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He needed to be larger than life. That perform that character needed to be uh, really colourful, and so I wanted him. I wanted him to. Uh, I wanted him to push it, and I knew that he would because I knew that he'd have fun with it. But yeah, the danger is always that it drifts off into kind of Monty Python. I love it. I think the movie needs that character at that point. Too. I think he's awesome in this film. I think he is awesome. Like that's. I have never seen it. Uh, I had no clue at the depth of uh, joy, playfulness, uh, funniness. I had no idea about any of these aspects of the human that clearly can do that, right? I kind of think of him as, you know, one withdrawn you know, vegan vampire, you know what I mean? Vegan vampire, it's a weird one, isn't it? How they all went sort of meatless and bloodless and eh, I think I'd prefer mine with a little more oomph, but but in any case, it's so much fun. If they don't like it, they need to get out. I thought everybody did did really good. Honestly, I was. I, I think it's always daunting to take on an accent that's that's you know not only not your own but so kind of far from your own. Especially when we're talking about like a period accent. It's, it's not even modern day it's so exposing. English that they have to do. Yeah, it's so exposing. And and same with the French. It's not even modern day French or anything. And Joel Joel was doing a northern accent in it. Yeah. And absolutely nailed it. Yeah, he nailed it. He yeah. nailed it. Everybody did a great yeah. job. I thought with the accents. Just trying to be as serious about the work as possible and 
realize that this material is, you know, especially in this country, is weighted with history and reverence and the you can be serious actors about it. We had some good rehearsal time with, with David once I got on set. I mean, I think it's always interesting to join a, a, a kind of production that people are on for a very long time and everything and kind of come in for a few days. So before coming to England, I did a lot of my own kind of preparation, you know, with my dialect coach and just like prepping the scenes and everything. And then once I got there, we got some good kind of offset rehearsal time with David and Timothy and got to kind of, you know, see it all happen without the pressure of like, we have to shoot right now. I think that's always good to have. Yeah. A lot of preparation. <laughs> a lot yeah. of preparation. <laughs> Even like rehearsing sequences that didn't make it in there. And, uh. Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> There's only so much you can choreograph yeah. that stuff. And, you know, I mean, it actually, it's scary because between, you know, action and cut, I'm there watching, my, hoping that I'm getting what I need. But I'm also there hoping that my actors, especially my leading man, doesn't die, you know. Because uh, that would, that would have made the rest of the shoot really awkward. Also, David wanted it to feel messy, that stuff. I think he pointedly didn't want it to feel choreographed or like a, like a, you know, sci-fi action movie sequence or something, so. And that would have been true to the period, too. More people drowned in that battle than mm. were killed, or were killed by stab wounds, or, yeah. Me and Timmy rehearsed for probably just over a month beforehand and absolutely slaving away at this, this choreography. Um, it got it got more complicated and then it got simplified and then it got more complicated again and then it got simplified so we're constantly changing. Um, but yeah, I loved it. Kept That's us very so good fit. about it though is it looks so scrappy. That's what I loved about their fight so yeah. much is it almost does look like school ground. Yeah, two kind of. school boys kind of you know. Yeah. Rough and tumble. <laughs> it was great. That's incredibly done. Yeah, the the choreography and the the way the camera moves through everything and the way it's been designed it's stunning. It's one of the best battle scenes I think I've yeah. seen. Yeah. I don't know if it's like fans of me and as much as fans of great, you know, hope, hopefully great movies and, uh, or great movie making. And, um, and I'm excited. I mean, this is all, it's a, it's a loosely based on Shakespeare, but at the end of the day, it's a period drama. And, uh, but that's, that's, I look right in the camera for this. That's what's really exciting about it is, and I almost don't even want to say this, but I feel maybe some audience members or people I've talked to after come into with an expectation of the language or the period or the tone is going to be like one of those movies that's like, lecturing you the whole time and that's not what this movie is at all it's it's it's, it's way better than that it's way cooler than that yeah <laughs> i've always thought to myself it could be a mini series a tv musical movies anything that is good so that doesn't mean that 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 means no sectioning off anything i think anything that's good and i just did dune which is uh not a superhero movie, but is a is a big IP. Big. So I'm excited for that to come out. Yeah. And you know, never say never. Like I said before, though, you know, because I experienced the whole thing as a form of suffering. It's like uh, <laughs> I'm I'm still in that like that. I'm still in that headspace where I never want to make another movie ever again. Which will pass. It always does. I God. So now you're asking because then people will be like, what? <laughs> um, I've always wanted to be able to give the Joker a go. I've always. Sick. But uh, there are some big boots to fill. You know, Wacky's just done it as well. I've not seen it yet. I think I've seen it on Sunday. So I'm looking forward to that. It's always about the, 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 the connection to, to the character to me. You know, I think it's like you can be a part of a, of a big, incredible beast, like something like that. But if you don't feel a connection to the character, then, you know, it's that's what it's all about to mm. me. Listen, I personally think the Hulk is the best character that exists in the Marvel Universe. So I'd take the Hulk because the banner transformation of, you know, and because it's all about anger and, you know, boy, I might become someone really bad that goes around and hurts things. Oh, hell no. Hell no. Hell no. But I can hide better than that lumbock fool. You know what I mean? Easy, man. I just turn into a filing cabinet. I learned what that was on the last one. I go like that, I'm a filing kid. What are you gonna do now, hulky pulky? But no, Ragnarok is, it's Ragnarok is their Marvel Universe's single best weird, cause that film should have been rubbish. That film by right should have just been like, huh? And that film is awesome. You know, it's almost as good as Robert Pattinson in this film, almost. But he beats it. 